she recovered from her English. <laughs> no, no, no! Please edit that, Craig. Please edit that. Yeah, don't worry, English won't hurt you. Don't worry, listeners. It won't hurt you. Hello and welcome to another episode of Aprende el Inglés con Reza y Craig. Hi, Reza. Hello, Craig. How are things with you? Things are very good, thank you. You're listening to episode 51 of Aprende el Inglés con Reza y Craig. And if you are a new listener, if this is your first time here, welcome. Reza and I both welcome you. This is a podcast which is going to help you, we hope, improve your English and take it to the next level. So we'd like to begin by saying hi to Elisa, who is, I think, from Finland, if I remember correctly. And Elisa has been listening to our interviews on EnglesPodcast.com and to this show with Reza Prideri Engles con Reza y Craig. And she's been sending us some lovely comments. Um, so thank you for your comments, Elisa. So we have next a voice message from Roser from Huelva, who is studying for her first certificate exam. And here's Roser's message. Hi, this is Roser from Huelva. I'm just um, sending you this, mes this message just to show how is my English now, uh, that I am starting to study English for the exam first certificate, for the first certificate exam. And I'm going to show you in one month how is my English later. And, and to show how if I, if I do better or not. <laughs> Sorry for the mistake. Uh, well, see you, kids. Bye. Good luck, Roser, with the first certificate. Very good luck. And if you need help with the FCE exam, um, you can go to inglespodcast.com slash FCE slash is barra. So there you will find podcasts which will help you with your FC exam. And of course, you can also go to our website at mansioningles.com where we have a full course for the FC exam at mansioningles.com. Our next message is from Moises Barajas, who says, Hola, soy nuevo en el estudio de inglés y me gustó mucho el audio. ¿Ustedes tienen todo lo que comentan de manera escrita? Hmm. Ya que en algunas conversaciones me pierdo y no sé su significado. Well, we've spoken about this before, Reza, haven't we? Yes. About writing the transcription for all of the episodes. What do you think? Yes, well, Moises, uh, Craig's answered this before more than once. It would be nice if a transcription existed, but you know, it's very time consuming. It is. For one person to do it. So it may not be possible. Well, there is, Craig, I think one possible suggestion you have for the future. Yes. I mean, obviously, we have thought about this because so many of you have um, sent us messages and asked us for the full transcriptions. But Reza and I both work. We're both teachers. We have a limited amount of free time. But we are going to launch or launch is lanzar. We, we are going to start a Patreon um, program, which means that this will give us some income, some money from this podcast so that we can spend it on paying somebody to do the transcriptions. So we will let you know, we will tell you in a future podcast when this is available. And if you send us some money, maybe one euro per person or two euros per person, we will be able to put some uh, transcriptions on the website so that you can follow the words as we say them. You said this is called Patreon? It's called Patreon. Can you spell that? Please? It's P-A-T-R-E. O N. Okay. That's the website, and uh, I am pretty sure. I'm ninety nine percent sure that you will go to Patreon slash or barra 
Inglés podcast. So that will be where we will send you for your donations. But as I said, it's not, I ha we haven't started it yet. I'm in the mm -hmm. process of setting it up. To set up means to lanzar or start. So when it is ready, which I hope will be in a week, then uh, we will let you, you know. Might, you might launch it. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry, listeners. I was concerned at first. I, I, I wasn't paying attention and I thought for a minute that Craig said that um, English podcasts are going to launch a Patriot missile. And I, was, <laughs> I was a bit worried about that. No, no we're missiles. not going to launch a Patriot missile. We're, we're going to launch a Patreon translation service. Yeah, Patreon comes from Patron. So it's really for Los Artes, for the arts. Yeah. And if you are a musician or a painter or a creator of content, which we are, we create content mm -hmm. for you, then it's just a way of getting Uh -huh. help so that um, we can continue to do it. But no missiles are going your way. No, <laughs> don't, don't worry. You have only our best intentions. No missiles. No missiles. Don't worry. <laughs> Another piece of news. Um, I've been looking at websites to practice your speaking because many of you have been asking for ways to practice speaking. And if you go to the Mansion Inglés, mansioningles.com, Cuaderno Mensual de Abril, the April newsletter, I have reviewed um, 10 or 11 websites, and there is a list of the top six, the best six websites that we have found. You can find that in our April newsletter at um, cuadernoingles.com or cuadernoingles.com. So that's the address. Go there, look at April, and you will see a list. But I want to speak about the best two here, or two of the ones that I really liked. The first one is italki, which you can find at italki.com. That's I-T-A-L-K-I. And it's a very good site which offers paid lessons by professional teachers. So you can pay for having lessons on the internet, online with a professional teacher. And you can also have free speaking practice with a native English speaker. Now, the native English speaker is not usually an English teacher, but you can speak to a real English person and practice your English, and then you would speak Spanish so they can practice your Spanish. So it's an online service, an internet service for language exchange. The second one I want to mention is verbling.com. That's V-E-R-B-L-I-N-G. And they use a system called Chat Roulette. So you are connected randomly at, to somebody who is a native speaker of the language you want to practice. So you will be connected to an English person. You practice for five minutes and then you change languages and then you can change person. So it's like speed dating but in another language. So at the moment, there are 11 different languages that you can practice on Verbling, mm -hmm. and you sign up with your email ad address, and it's free for language practice, but you can also pay for group lessons and private lessons with a teacher if you want to. And I interviewed a representative from Verbling, called Alex, and you can find this interview, if you want to know more, go to inglespodcast.com slash verbling, and you can listen to my interview with Alex, which is also listening practice, because I've put some comprehension questions for the interview there on inglespodcast.com barra verbling. And please let us know your opinion on these language services. If you try them, if you have experience, or if you're going to try them, please tell us what you think. We'd be very interested to know your opinion, to know which we can recommend, which we should recommend to our listeners. Craig, you said that Verbling uses chat roulette. Yes. And that they um, have a service for several languages. Mm -hmm. Just can I give a word of warning for internet users? I would be very careful about putting in Russian roulette 
if you're interested in learning Russian, that's good, but you could get more than you bargained for with Russian roulette. That game where you point a gun at your own head and see if you blow your head off. So not only sending missiles at you, we might be sending bullets, <laughs> bullets your way as well. <laughs> be careful with that. But it might be useful if you wanted to practice your French or your Valenciano, for example. Oh, probably Valenciano, I don't think they would have. But right, French, right. definitely. Maybe. Oui. Oui. So, uh, maybe oui. you could try and uh, go and practice your French there. So, uh, why not go and look at these websites and see if they can help you to practice your speaking and send your feedback and your comments to mansionteachers at yahoo.s or leave us a voice message with your comments at inglespodcast.com. Grammar, Reza. Prepositions at the end of questions. Mm -hmm. A preposition at the end of a question. What would you want to do that for? Well, in some conversations, it's quite common to ask a short question that has a preposition at the end. For example, Reza, ask me what I'm doing. What are you doing? I'm thinking. What are you thinking about? Right. Yeah. What are you thinking about? So about, the preposition about often goes with the verb to think because you think about something. Mm -hmm. So the short question would be, what about? Yeah. What I'm thinking, what about? It's not necessary to repeat, what are you thinking about? Just that short question with the preposition is very common in English. Let's try one more, Reza. Ask me if I'm going out tonight. Are you going out tonight, Craig? Well, it depends. What on? It depends on how I feel. Oh. So, yep, on is the preposition with depends. It depends on. Well, it depends. What on? So, what does it depend on? What on? Would you say as well, on what? Um, yes, but that sounds a bit more formal, isn't it? More formal, yeah, yeah. but also right, yeah? You could say what on or on what. Or it depends. What on for, what? for what, right? One more. Ask me what the matter is. Craig, what's the matter? I'm angry. Um, I could say who with? Yes. Or what for? Or what about? Or what about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ask me if I'm going on holiday. Are you going on holiday, Craig? No, I'm afraid. What of? Flying. Ah. Ask me if I can give you a hand. Craig, can you give me a hand, please? Sorry, I'm busy. What with? Uh, work, you know, podcasting, usual things. Yeah, so I'm busy, busy with. What with? What are you busy with? What with? Ask me if I'm ready to leave. Ask me if I'm ready to go. Are you ready to go now, Craig? No, I'm waiting. What for? My friend to phone. Uh-huh. Yeah. I could have said also who for as well. Yeah, who what for. What for? Who yeah, for? I'm waiting for someone. Yeah, I'm waiting. Who for? What for? One more. Um, ask me if I can turn the radio off. Can you turn the radio off, please? No, I'm listening. What to? My podcast. Of course. <laughs> ask, me, <laughs> ask me if I'm okay. For example, I seem very quiet today. I seem very introspective and quiet. So ask me if I'm okay. Yes, you do seem a bit quiet. Are you okay today? No, I'm worried. What about? Um, nuclear war. Mm-hmm. Patriot missiles. Patriot missiles. Things like that. Russian roulette. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, any other comments on prepositions at the end of sentences? A few examples, yeah. Okay, let's see if I can get you to respond with a preposition in your question the way you did with me. Go for it. Um, I'm driving somewhere. Where to? To the four corners of the world. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. Um, I have to go shopping. What for? For fruit and vegetables. Right. Yeah. Um, do, do they have this in Spanish? Do they say this in Spanish? Oh. Para que? Yes. Para but, que? But never putting the preposition at the end. Right. Not right. que para. Yeah. yeah. We say what yeah. for, but you can't no, say que para. para. It's always yeah, para que. Yeah, it's true. It's the, uh, it's the I, word order is different. I think that's what really 
Uh, surprises Spanish speakers at first when they hear prepositions at the end of sentences and questions. Mm. It's just not possible in Spanish. Do you know something I'm very interested? What in? The difference between Spanish and English. Uh, what in? Yeah, what in? So, moving on to our vocabulary section this week, and I thought we could, uh, we've done this before, look at some phrasal verbs, Reza, and the equivalent full verb in English, because right. many phrasal verbs have an equivalent full verb, un verbo principal, that's very, uh, that is similar in meaning to the phrasal verb. So see if you can see if you can guess can, which. Can I just ask verb. you a question first, Craig, about that? There's the phrasal verb. There's the full verb. Mm -hmm. uh, why learn both? What for? Why learn <laughs> what, both? What for? What for? What for? If you know one, why learn the other? What for? Preposition. What for? Um, because phrasal verbs are very often used more, more common in spoken English, uh -huh. and the full verb is often used more in written English because it's a little more formal. More formal, yeah. okay. It's a little more formal. So, for reasons of formality, quite often we don't use the phrase of verb if you want to be formal, right? Yeah, and okay. I think when Spanish people speak, when students, English students speak, it doesn't really matter if they use the phrasal verb or the full verb, it's just that the phrasal verb sounds more natural. Yes. It sounds more um, common in, in conversational English. Don't you think that's an indication of a someone who's got a very high level of English, a foreigner? If they use a lot of phrasal verbs correctly and naturally, you know they're good. It's a, it's a sign of a good speaker. If they're used correctly and correctly, naturally, because yeah. phrasal verbs can be complicated, you have to get the object in the right place and with the correct um, collocation sometimes. So it's not easy to use phrasal yeah. verbs correctly. But there are some common ones that it's a good idea to know. For example, to get over. If I say to you, Reza, she got over her illness, what verb comes to mind? She recovered. Yes, mm -hmm. she recovered from her English. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 please edit that, Craig. Please edit that. Yeah, don't English worry, won't hurt you, don't worry, listeners, it won't hurt you. I'll remove, I'll remove that uh, in, in editing. You'll take it out. Exactly, I'll take it out, yeah. So she got over her illness, she recovered from her illness, or her English. <laughs> um, one more, the police looked into it. They investigated it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To investigate, to look into something. He gave me the money back. He returned. He the returned money. the money. They talked it over. I talked it over with my girlfriend. Talked over. I discussed it. Exactly. The dog went for him. Attacked. Yes. The dog attacked. If you attack someone, you go for them. He went for me. He attacked me. This one is not so common. Let's try this one. It suddenly dawned on her. Ooh, dawn on someone. To dawn. D-A-W-N. To dawn on. It suddenly dawned on her. Well, I certainly know what it means, but let's see if I can get a nice, succinct definition. It's that aha moment when you go, aha, ah, it suddenly dawned on me. I suddenly realized. Realized. Yeah. I realized. That's it. It's to realize, but suddenly, yes. not slowly, suddenly. Go, and, it, and it's very common. It's very a very common phrasal verb. Yeah. It dawned on me that I forgot to give him the money back or it dawned on me that I was going to be late. So Mm -hmm. Yeah, I realised The suddenly. penny finally dropped. The penny dropped. That's another way of saying it, isn't it? They say that in Spanish, don't they? Ha caído la moneda? Do they, Do say, they that? say that? I think so. I didn't know. Yeah, I think so. I'm sure we'll get some emails about that, whether they do or not. I feel for you. I feel for you. To I feel for someone. Sympathise or empathise? Yes, I sympathise with you. I feel for you. I really feel for you. Not feel you, that would be something else. No, feel is tocari, <laughs> but not in a good way. <laughs> she, she, hadn't, she hadn't bargained for this. She hadn't, I didn't bargain for it. Aha, that's Now, but, now it's tricky, isn't it? Because bargain can mean regatear. Yes. 
to which it. I was doing recently when I was on holiday in Morocco. That's right. In the I markets. had to bargain. Mm-hmm. That means they said to me, "It's ten euros." And I said, "What? Don't be crazy! It's you four euros." Joking. And they said. Okay, you're going to ruin me, but eight. And I said, I'll give you five and no more. You'll give me six. Okay, 550, done. Yeah, it's a deal. To bargain. But Craig didn't ask me that. Can you repeat your sentence, please? Yes, I said, she hadn't bargained for this. Uh Aha, bargained for. The preposition changes everything. It's a phrase or verb. She hadn't prepared for it. Yes. To bargain for is prepare. Exactly. Whereas to bargain is to talk about, to disagree about the price. Somebody wants, the seller wants more money mm. and the buyer wants the price lower. You That's can also bargain. say to haggle, H-A-G-G-L-E, to haggle for something, mm-hmm. which is to argue over the price, to bargain or to haggle. But the phrasal verb to bargain for is to um, not expect something or to be surprised by something. And finally, one more, she went round to her house, to go round to somewhere. Um, To visit. Rezo came round today. He visited. Yeah, to visit, to visit her house. Are you coming round tomorrow? Another common expression. Yeah. I'm going round to my mum's. I'm visiting my mum's. Even more informally... People often say pop round or in pop, British or English. Pop, pop in. in. I just pop in round or popping in. Yeah, pop Do in you mind in. if I pop in tomorrow? No, pop in for a coffee. Pop in. Come round. Okay, um, moving on to our weekly wind-ups. Do you moving have, on, continue. Continuing. To, yep, to moving on, very good. Moving. I didn't think of that. You're, you're very quick today. You're very on the ball. Oh, more I'm than, so, sh- more I'm than so usual. sharp, I cut myself, Craig. You're <laughs> brain of mine. <laughs> <laughs> weekly wind-ups. Do you have a weekly wind-up this week, oh, uh, Rizzo? How do I not? Of course I do. Now, <clears throat> I've already mentioned bosses. Oh, in- sorry, we should we should first explain if you're a new <clears throat> listener uh, and this is your first uh, episode with us. A weekly wind-up is where Reza and I basically complain about things that annoy us or irritate us or bother us. They wind molestar, us up. Fastidiar, molestar, disgustar. So any to what any wind ups this week? Yes, frequent listeners may recall my um, mentioning bosses before. It was about stuffy bosses. That's already done. Back to bosses, but this but time stu- boss- we should explain stuffy, oh, hot, uh, hot, no, no air, no air, dirty, smelly, you know, a space which has had all the oxygen used up in it. It's horrible. I've already done that one. You can listen to that in a previous episode. This time, I'm going to have a go at, there's a phrase, a verb, I'm going to criticize, I'm going to have a go at bus drivers. Bus drivers. Bus Before drivers. it was the passengers. Now I'm having a go at the drivers. My wind up is specifically this. Bus drivers, I was going to say a bad word, but I won't. Bus drivers who take pleasure in not letting passengers on. That winds me up. (laughs) Obviously, it's worst of all if the passenger is you. But even if you're on a bus and you see how some old lady wants to get on the bus and the bus driver's just closed the door at the stop. He's seen her. He has seen that old woman. He pretends he hasn't. And he won't let her on. She's banging on the door. It's raining outside. She's very old. I think, what a what a terrible person. What and sometimes they'll, they'll person. do it on purpose, it seems. that they'll, they'll see someone running for the bus, but they won't pull away. To pull away means to, to leave where they're standing, to, to start to move. They won't pull away immediately. They'll wait just until the person is nearly at the door, and then they'll go. Yeah. The, to get your hopes up yeah. for nothing, only to to make them crash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. I really want to. And it's particularly bad if it's you. And if you were in a hurry and you really needed to get that bus yeah. and he made you feel, the driver made you feel it, yeah, you're going to catch it, then no, you're not going to catch it. Terrible. What's your weekly wind-up? My weekly wind up, um, scatter cushions on a bed. Come again? Come again? (laughs) Come again? Which is repeat yourself, please? Repeat, please repeat. Um, Scatter cushions on a bed. Now, on a bed you have pillows, which in Spanish are almohadas. 
where you put your head when you sleep. Yeah. Now, cushion is like a pillow, but it's smaller. I think in Spanish it's cojín. So in many hotels or guest houses and places where you stay, the bed is full of these small cushions which have no purpose on the bed. There's no reason for them to be there. Mm -hmm. So before you go to bed, you have to take off these cushions and then put them back in the morning or you don't put them back and then the person who cleans the room puts them back. So the bed is constantly full of these cushions and there's no reason for them. Not that I mm -hmm. can see. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for these cushions being on the bed. I agree with you. I never use them myself. Scatter cushions. Did you have them at home growing up? No. Me neither. No. Me neither. That's why I think it annoys me so much when, you know, I see lots of cushions on the bed. Mm -hmm. As far as I can see, these cushions are going to do nothing but accumulate dirt because people are always throwing them on the ground because they don't want them. Exactly. So they're just full of dirt and dust. And, and they're not they're necessary. Horrible. They're not necessary. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's my yeah. wind-up this week. If you have a wind-up or a comment or if you like to just say hello and practice your English, you can send us a voice message and go to our webpage at inglespodcast.com, click the orange button and speak. Make sure you have a microphone yeah. and we love hearing from you and we love getting your, your voice messages. Or just send us an email to craig at inglespodcast.com or to reza at belfastreza at gmail.com. And if you would like us to send you a summary of all of the podcasts we produce each month, you can sign up to our email list at inglespodcast.com. And also don't forget to write a review on iTunes and give us some stars, because if you do this, we become more visible on iTunes. So please go to iTunes and, and write a review if you liked the show. Craig, did you say to leave a voice message? You click the orange button, did you the say? The orange button. Orange button. El botón naranja. Be careful. There may be a red button. Don't click that. That's that the missile. That launches a Patriot missile. <laughs> Don't click that one. We'll get into big trouble. trouble. <laughs> click the orange button. And we will be giving you more news about our Patreon project <laughs> in a future podcast. So until next episode, it's a huge goodbye from me. And I'll second that. And <laughs> it's goodbye from Reza. <laughs> Goodbye. Good news. We have some good news for you. We now have a Patreon program to give you what you're asking for. Many, many people have been asking us for full episode transcriptions of Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. So we need $100 or 100 euros per month to be able to pay a service to transcribe our show. So if 100 of you listeners give $1 or 1 euro each per month, that's less than the price of a cup of coffee, then we can do it. We can pay a service to write the transcriptions and publish them on our website. So how about you? Will you help Razor and I improve our podcast? If you donate a euro each month, we also promise to answer your questions about English. So we will answer questions of everyone who donates and supports us on Patreon. Of course, you can donate more than one euro if you want to. Just go to patreon.com slash English podcast. That's patreon, p-a-t-r-e-o-n, punto com, barra English podcast. And thank you very much for listening and for supporting our podcasts. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later.